Good afternoon from Hartford, Connecticut. It's Team Strub Day 87. This is my 43rd state of the summer, and I am thrilled to be here this afternoon with Robin from True Colors. Robin, thank you so much for taking the time Thanks this afternoon. Thanks so much for coming. On a very busy day, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but Robin, why don't you introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. and, um, and thank you everybody for watching on Meerkat Live as well, before we get going. Robin, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you do. Okay, so I'm Robin McCallan. I'm from True Colors. And what True Colors does, if people, people don't know, is we do education and advocacy for gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, intersex, queer, questioning, two-spirit, same gender, lesbian, pansexual, lexual, not straight, not labeling, straight, if straight so far, straight with options, straight with stuff happens, gender bending, gender bending, bi-gendered, pan-gendered, agendered, asexual, and other sexual and gender minority youth. Can you tell we work with teenagers? It's like you've said that before. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, very good. Very yeah, well done. Yeah. So I, mean, I always start with the, the litany of the language because young people really are identifying themselves in so many more fluid ways than many of us grew up with. So I like to start with some of the ways that young people are identifying themselves. And so you've been doing this for how long? 23 years. And so this must be a totally new challenge for you then. It as, is. As this is it about, is. But it's a fun challenge. Yeah, it is. It keeps me young. Right here, it's not any less gray, but it keeps me young. Um, that when I was growing up, there was only two boxes. There was one really big straight box and one little bitty gay box. And everybody's supposed to get in the straight box, but if you got in the gay box, they thought you'd at least stay there. And, um, and now, young people are going like, nah, not so much. And not only about attractions and sexuality, but also about gender and how they experience themselves as man, a man or a woman or something more very different than that. Wow, tell me about what your organization does. Um, we have five employees in seven programs, so okay. we're a very busy group. We um, run the largest LGBTQI, ABCD, EFG conference in the country. It's on uh, March 18th and 19th uh, in 2016 at the University of Connecticut. And that's a whole organizing effort. So it's young people putting that conference together for young people and everybody that's responsible for their health and well-being. And usually there's 3,000 plus people from all over the country at that conference. So we organize the conference. We work with young people all over the state um, we're with Gay Straight Alliances and a youth leadership program, and we have the country's one of only two programs in the whole country that mentors um, LGBT youth in out-of-home care with LGBT and ally mentors. Um, and so that program's been going since 2005. We've got about 70 kids in that program. Um, we also do social and recreational activities for young people of all orientations and genders. We do foster parent recruitment for teens regardless of their identity, because teenagers are among the hardest young people to place in out-of-home care, you know, in a family. Um, and then we do a spiritual institute which looks at creating safe spaces for LGBT youth to do their spiritual work. Um, and then the, we have a project that's, that, that's a collaboration between us and the Department of Children and Families called the Safe Harbor Project which specifically focuses on LGBT youth and out of home care. So there is an enormous amount of stuff going on here. Yeah. Um, all kinds of, of really wonderful stuff. Tell me about what's happening tonight to get the So reaction. one of the things that's happening is in the summer we do a program called Queer Academy. Okay. And it takes young people who are interested in developing their leadership skills and puts them through a very intensive six week, it's, it's both academic and social and personal growth. So this year the theme was um, art, um, identity, and intersectionality. And so they spent the whole summer working on those components of themselves. Last Thursday, we did a presentation of learning which was called a Queer Scout Shoot, uh, Share Out, uh, where they shared their learning. And tonight's a celebration. And one of the things that we're celebrating is queer culture, this concept of drag and gender as an element of LGBT culture. So rather than a graduation, we're having a draguation. And um, all of the, the young people will be performing as well as in, with identities and songs and uh, personas that, that somehow describe who they see themselves to be in the world. Then there'll be professional performers and, um, and so it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a hoot. I think it's gonna be hilarious. And uh, a local theater donated the space so we're hoping to have several hundred people come out and watch our young people graduate. Wow, 
That's fantastic. It's been a big summer for the LGBT mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. um, big few years, actually. Right. Um, but I wanted to pose this question to you a little differently. That um, you know, you've been married for twenty years or something. Yeah, it'll be twenty years. Say. August twenty sixth. Um, but in many ways, the gay marriage announcement. A lot of people, you know, around the country think that's the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, all our problems are solved now. But that's that's really not the case. That isn't the case. I, I you know I was excited about gay marriage and my same sex marriage and marriage equality. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It made a difference for me and my family, obviously. But it's never been the only issue. You know that that there's always been a lot more issues. And one of the things that I'm excited about is the possibility that some attention can come back now to the things that matter. So for example, um, young people, LGBT youth, have to grow up before they can get married. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to have a bed to sleep in before they can walk down the aisle. That LGBT youth represents somewhere around 4%, 5% of the population, but 40% of the homeless youth population. Um, we still have issues of intersectionality where a kid who has multiple social identities, so let's say a black um, lesbian, you know, where does she get to go where she's both able to be a lesbian and black, because if she comes into the larger white LGBT community, they're just as racist as everybody else. If she goes into the larger black community, she may or may not be welcomed um, as, as a lesbian. Not that, I, and please don't hear that I'm saying one community is more homophobic than another, I'm not. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that youth who have multiple social identities, often those identities are in conflict, and there's very few places in the world where they get to bring their whole selves. That's why our theme for the whole next year is intersectionality. And how do we create spaces for people to bring their whole selves? And how do we create allies that will make that possible? This trip has taken me all around the country. Are you mm -hmm. from Connecticut? Yes. Okay. Do you feel like Connecticut has been the perfect place to, to run an organization like this and to try and make, you know mm -hmm. push so, social progress? Over you the know what? I think it really has been that I think personally people are not as socially progressive as they pretend to be, but politically this is a very progressive state. You know, marriage passed, uh, we're going to be, in 2016, we're going to be celebrating the 25th anniversary of the, the civil rights law that added sexual orientation to Connecticut civil rights statutes. But, you know, when it's interesting, because so that was 25 years ago that Connecticut added sexual orientation, and you can now get married in 50 states but you can be fired in 29 of them. So you go down the aisle today, and then you're out of a job tomorrow. Um, and so, um, you know, I think that, that Connecticut politically is very progressive, that we have had, you know, there's the, the, the gay rights bill, there's the hate crimes bill. Uh, Connecticut is one of only a handful of states that allows second parent adoption. So when my wife had our daughter, at that moment that she was born, my was the first hands on her when she was born, but I was a legal stranger to her. If something had happened to Holly, there would have been no guarantee I would have retained custody. And then the following year, Connecticut passed co-parent adoption, which allowed me to legally adopt her so that, you know, I have all the legal rights and responsibilities of, of parenting with her. And she's now 16, and she would like my legal rights and responsibilities be to drive her to the mall. Um, but other, you know, I mean, but but it matters that you know. So I think Connecticut's been very progressive. I got a tough one for you. Now, okay. okay. There's people in your position all around the country mm -hmm. running organizations just like yours, and maybe not having such levels of success. So, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to another Robin somewhere mm -hmm. who's trying to make progress, maybe in a state that's not nearly as progressive mm -hmm. as Connecticut? That again, the, you know, these are challenges that you've been facing for years and years, personally and professionally. When we started, there were only four gay straight alliances in Connecticut, and now there's 168. Um, we had the Civil Rights Bill, but we didn't have any of the other, the other laws. And so I think the single most important thing to do is to find your allies, that to reach out to people in, so if you, if you think about a youth, so here's a young person, who are all the adults that are responsible for that young person's health and well-being? So you need to, to think about who within family organizations would be an ally for you, maybe PTA, maybe PFLAG or other groups. Um, there's educators, so who within the, the state education system 
would be an ally for you, somebody that you can begin to work with. Child welfare, because our kids get thrown out at higher rates, they get harassed at higher rates. Who in the child welfare system, who in juvenile justice might be somebody that would be helpful? Who within communities of faith are already thinking about and doing this work? So who are your allies and how do you bring them together to create a coalition that's gonna make a difference for LGBT youth? I think the reason we've been successful in Connecticut, not just me personally in this, in this work, but all of the LGBT work, is that people have right from the beginning thought about and worked in coalition. Um, I think that the one place where we have not been as good as we need to be, and that's one of the reasons we're looking at intersexuality, intersectionality, is that you know that looking at we've always been focused on race and, and, and class and other issues and those intersectionalities, but I think we need to make it an explicit part of our work, and we're in the process of looking at becoming you know a social, an anti-racist organization, and what is the work that we need to do internally to have that happen. Um, and I think, especially with everything that's going, around, going on around the country, that every LGBT organization needs to look at how do you, who are the, if you are the leadership and you are a white LGBT person, how do you focus on the needs of the, uh, the co communities of color within our, our, um, our work? How do we make sure that their needs are met as well? Does that make sense? It sure does. I think sure. I talked too much. I went like, bleh. <laughs> you asked me a question, I went, bleh. <laughs> right. That's the whole idea. Um, where does the money come from? Right now, we're very, we're actually very happy that, that when we first started, all of our money came from one little department in the state. Okay. Um, and that's not a good way to run. Right. Um, and not so, the first time I've heard that. Right. So, so um, about one third of our money comes through state contracts. Uh, one third comes through fee-based services, so for the training that we do for the conference and other activities that we people pay us to do. Um, and then the other third comes from individual donors and private foundations. We're very focused on, on growing our individual donor base and reducing our focus on private foundations and corporations just because that money is becoming very tight um, in this in this culture, but I think we're, we're pretty excited that we've been able to really diversify our different funding streams, and I think that's been a very helpful thing for us to do. Great. Uh, what is the role of volunteers? With oh my God. Volunteers, volunteers brought in about 13,000 hours last year. Wow. So if you think about, even if we paid them minimum wage, that would be a whole nother, you know, third of our budget. Um, and so we can't survive without volunteers. And volunteers do everything from filing in the office to mentoring to um, you know, uh, being on our board of directors to organizing our annual conference to tabling for us in different events. So anybody who's interested, whether they've got an hour a week, you know, 10 hours a year, whatever they've got, we've got a space for them. And we have, thanks to the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, we now have a volunteer coordinator who can, uh, Amber, can help really help people think through what your skills are, what is a good match, and how would you be the best fit. Fantastic. Where can people learn more about this wonderful organization? So the best place is online at OurTrueColors.org. So it's O-U-R TrueColors.org. Um, they can call us at 860-232-0050. Um, we're on Facebook at Our True Colors, Our True Colors at Facebook and True Colors Inc. in Facebook. Um, we have, a, we have a, a fairly big Facebook presence. Um, we're on Twitter at True Colors Inc. Um, and we're on, uh, well, I think that's it where we are now. So we're working on okay. Tumblr and some of the other things. Sure, but, sure. You know, five employees and seven programs we're working on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like you guys are doing a wonderful job. Thank and you. And I want to say thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you. It's Great meeting you. Congratulations pleasure. on what you're doing. That's exciting and wonderful. Thank you so much, and congratulations to you and the entire organization. It sounds like it's going to be very, very exciting and fun tonight. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't wait. wait. It's going to be a hoot. And it's free, and, and it's open to the public. That's, that's awesome. So, uh, 